In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to buy another house using your home's equity. And it could be another primary residence, it could be an investment townhome, it could be a multi-unit, but I'm going to show you exactly how to tap in your home's equity and apply that towards purchasing another property. My name is Justin Lopatin. I've been a mortgage lender for 18 years and I've helped over 5,000 families buy, invest, and purchase properties around the United States. Let's get into it. So what is home equity? Home equity is the value of your home, which is determined by your loan balance subtracted from your home's value. So let's say your home's value is about $400,000, and let's say you have a mortgage balance of $300,000. 400,000 minus 300,000 leaves you with $100,000 of home equity. Understanding your home equity is critical for a variety of reasons. Number one, your home equity is established with your down payment. So if you put down 20K or 20%, that starts off your home's equity and the growth. Now, your home's equity is built in two different ways primarily. The first way is home appreciation. If your home value is going up every year, you're building home equity. The second way you build home equity is by paying down your balance every single month. We call that principal reduction. So every month you make a mortgage payment, a portion of that payment goes towards your home equity. Some of it goes towards interest and taxes, but a portion of it goes towards your equity. So every month you're chipping away at your loan balance. Ideally, if home values appreciate every single year, you build equity up and you build equity down and that equity can be leveraged to help you make other investments. So I'm sure you've heard this before, but the number one way people build wealth and store wealth is in real estate. And specifically that refers to the home equity in people's real estate holdings. Some people have one home, some people have three homes, some people have big apartment buildings or an entire portfolio. So that being said, your home's equity changes every single month. Every month you're making a mortgage payment and every month home values can go up or down. Now, your home's equity can be determined in two ways. It can be determined by an appraisal, which is a snapshot on where the market is now, or it can be determined if you actually go and list your home for sale and you negotiate a price that which someone is willing to pay. It's not cash you can access in the bank tomorrow, but there are ways to tap into it and to build your wealth. So we've touched on what home equity is and how it's determined. Let's talk about the various ways you can access your home equity. The first way is a home equity loan. You're essentially getting a mortgage for a portion of the equity. It's a second mortgage. It's a loan and you receive a lump sum of cash. From there, you make monthly mortgage payments to pay down that balance every single month, just like you do on your primary mortgage. For example, let's say you wanted to borrow $60,000. You would apply for a home equity loan. You would get that $60,000 after the underwriting and mortgage process, which takes a few weeks. Once you close, you get that money. It's yours to do whatever you want, and you pay it down every single month, just like you do on your first mortgage. I have this magical thing called a home equity loan. Now, the second way is a home equity line of credit, which is also also known as a HELOC. This is a little bit different. You're not getting a lump sum at closing. You're getting an open line of credit. So let's use the same $60,000. After you go through the underwriting process and get approved for your HELOC, you have a $60,000 line that you can tap into whenever you want. So initially, you may not need to use the funds. Let's say you want to do some repairs. You get a quote. It takes 30 days to get a bid. And now you know that you need to spend $10,000 on a new garage. Well, you can borrow 10000 of that $60,000 line, and then every month you only pay on that 10000 The idea here is to not get all the money up front, to have access to it, and you pay as you use it. A really easy way to understand this is to think about a HELOC as a credit card. You use what you need, and you pay down your balance every month, but you don't get it all in one lump sum. Now, the third way to access your home equity is through a cash out refinance. This is a little bit different than the first two ways because now you have one new loan. So here's how it works. Let's say your mortgage balance is $300,000 and you want to take out $60,000 for home improvements. Instead of getting a second mortgage for $60,000 and having two loans at two different rates, you do one new loan for $360,000 and the difference between what you owe and what your new loan is, is what you get to keep in one lump sum. Now you have one mortgage payment. It's based off the $360,000 loan. It keeps your finances simple and it houses all of the debt under one interest rate for simplicity. Now here's the fourth and last way to access your home's equity. And it's kind of straightforward. It's basically selling your home. Now, I'm not saying you need to go out and sell your home, but at some point you might be ready to make a move, ready to downsize or ready to relocate. When you sell your home, a realtor is going to help you determine your home's value. You're going to look at your mortgage statement to determine what you owe. And the difference is your home equity. So all in all, what you'll walk away with after you sell your home is the sale price minus the real estate transaction fees and minus your actual mortgage balance and any taxes owed at closing. So now we understand what home equity is and how you can access it. Let's talk about some of the common ways that you can use your home's equity to your benefit. So the first and most common way people use their home's equity is to buy a new primary residence.
residence. In other words, you sell the home you're living in now, you take the money you've made, which is your home's equity, and you apply that towards a down payment on your new home, which you're going to reside in. The most common example of this is when a young family outgrows the space they have and they need a bigger home with a yard and a basement. Now, the second way to use your home's equity is to buy an investment property. And this is one of my favorite strategies to make more money. What you do is you take a home equity line of credit or home equity loan and you use that money to purchase another property. It might be a two unit, it might be a four unit, it might even be a single family home. You get some renters in that property and now you start having some cash flow, which you can use for other investments. You can use it to pay down your current mortgage. The idea here is to build another stream of income and now to have a second property that's building more equity that contributes to your total net worth. Now, if you're paying attention here, you'll start to notice some patterns. As a mortgage lender, this is the most common way we help people buy their first investment property by using the equity in their primary residence. And over time, what happens is you start to build more equity in every property that you own, and you can tap into that equity to purchase another investment property and to build your real estate portfolio over time. The third way to use your home's equity is to pay off high interest rate debt like a credit card or an auto loan. As I record this video, credit card rates are at an all-time high, between 25 to 30%. Mortgage rates are still around 7%. By eliminating high interest rate credit card debt, or even a high interest rate auto loan, it could drastically lower your total monthly overhead. For example, let's say you took out $40,000 of home equity to pay off all your credit card debt and to pay off a high payment auto loan. That $40,000 in monthly payments might cost you $300 a month. But by eliminating all the debt from your credit cards and your auto loan, you could save over $1,000 a month for a net savings of about $700 per month. And the last way to leverage your home equity is to establish an emergency reserve fund. Now, a lot of people sleep on this and many first time and second time buyers don't even consider it. But here's the deal. There might come a time where you need a major repair, where you need to do some maintenance, where you come across a business opportunity or an investment opportunity. Having that open line of credit gives you the ability to tap into that equity immediately and to use it for whatever reason or whatever purpose you need in your life at that time. Again, it could be an emergency. It could be an investment. It could be some major repair or maintenance on your home. The punchline is it's important to have access to reserve funds or to investment funds when you need them in a pinch. So look, we've talked about all the exciting ways you can leverage your home's equity, how to access that cash to make more money. But I'd be remiss if I didn't share some of the things to be mindful of and some of the downsides of borrowing too much money. No, we're not borrowing money. So the first thing to consider, obviously, is as you borrow more money against your home, it reduces your home's equity. Let's say in a couple of years you want to go sell your home, but real estate values have dropped. If your loan balance is here and real estate values come down to here, you have no equity to make when you sell your home and you might even need to bring some money to the closing table to get rid of that property. The second thing to be mindful of is your debt to income ratio. This is what lenders look at, which is basically how much debt you have compared to how much income you bring in. So when you get that money, we're looking to make sure you can make those monthly payments. But for example, let's say a year or two passes and you lose your job or the financial circumstances in your household change. You still got to make that payment every month and it might be challenging. So just be very mindful of what those new payments are going to be when you take that equity and think down the road two, three years so you don't commit to a financial situation that puts a strain on you and your family. So now that we have a better understanding of your home's equity and its use, I want to give you a simple example of how to use your home's equity to buy another home. So let's say you've been in your current home for the last five years, and let's assume your home's value is $400,000 and your home's balance is $300,000. So you got about $100,000 worth of home equity. Now, Because your interest rate on that home that you own right now is still very low, you don't want to sell it. You want to rent it out and make some money, but you still need that equity for the down payment on your new home. So let's say you want to buy a $500,000 home and you want to put 10% down. That's $50,000. So your goal here is to take $50,000 out of your current home's equity and apply it towards a down payment on the new home. So what you would do is you would apply for a home equity loan and you would get that $50,000 in the form of a lump sum. Based on today's interest rates, that $50,000 will cost you anywhere from $300 to $400 a month. So you got to take that into consideration and you got to look at your current mortgage payment plus the three to $400 a month. And you got to make sure that the rental income from the property you're moving out of meets or covers that monthly amount. That way you don't have to worry about paying additional to use that $50,000. Now, when you go to buy your new property, the mortgage lender you're working with will take into consideration that $50,000 as your down payment. It's completely allowable. And when you go to make an offer, this is the key here. You don't need what's called a home sale contingency. That means you can buy the new home without having to sell your previous home because the rental income that you're going to get covers the mortgage payment and your home equity payment in total. So now your income is freed up to go buy and qualify for your new $500,000 property. So you find that $500,000 property, 
you go through the mortgage process and that $50,000 home equity loan is totally used to cover your entire down payment. So if you made it to the end of this video, I hope you picked up a couple nuggets and I hope it got your mind thinking about the different ways to leverage your home's equity to grow your wealth by buying more real estate. If you have specific questions, if you want to apply for a home equity line, or if you just want to see what you qualify for, reach out to my team and I. We'd be happy to help you think it through, happy to help you be a sounding board, and we can talk more about the different ways we're helping other clients do exactly what I explained in this video today. And of course, for more financial and more real estate education, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. See you soon.